in the previous videos we were talking about nutrition in organisms and we also saw how nutrition takes place or how amoeba takes its nutrition like unicellular organism so today in this part we will be talking about nutrition in human beings in human beings to take the nourishment or take the food then chew it to digest it and to absorb it there are different parts and those parts make the complete digestive system so we will first take up different parts of the digestive system and then we will try to draw various parts so for us we have a digestive system and in this system we will be talking about various parts as well as the glands because these glands they are very important so first part is the mouth now which part is known as mouth the opening of our digestive system so our digestive system or our alimentary canal has two openings one is the mouth the other is the anus so mouth is the opening which is guarded by two lips so the opening which we see between our lips is our mouth this mouth leads into a cavity and this cavity is known as buccal cavity and in this buccal cavity there is tongue there are teeth and there is a secretion of our salivary glands which is poured into this uh, buccal cavity so we will keep drawing different parts and we will also write down the uh, names or the regions and once we understand the complete parts then we will take up the functions of each and every part so let us say this is the mouth we are just trying to draw a simple face so that we are able to understand the location of different things so this opening is the mouth and here is the cavity so let us say here in our buccal cavity we see the tongue so here is the tongue and then there are teeth so this is our jaw and in the jaw we have different types of teeth from the, our nose we breathe in so from here we take the air in these are known as nostrils so when we breathe in the air goes through our nostrils into a different passage and when we eat the mouth goes in through our uh, sorry the food goes in through our mouth and there is a different uh, space that means this space and this space are separated so this is how the two compartments are now this area is known as the buccal cavity and this area is known as the nasal chamber so when we breathe in the air goes to our nasal chamber when we eat something then it enters into our buccal cavity and this particular part this upper part of our buccal cavity this part it is known as the palate so mouth is the opening of our digestive system or digestive tract then it goes into the cavity now in this cavity we will be talking about tongue how tongue helps how it helps in tasting the food how it uh, helps in mixing of food with the saliva tongue then we will be talking about different types of teeth we will be talking about palate and we will be talking about salivary glands these salivary glands pour saliva here and we will also discuss the functions of saliva and from buccal cavity now the food is going into a pipe so this is our neck region and in the neck region there are two pipes 
there is one pipe here there is another pipe here and on the back side we have our backbone or the vertebral column so the pipe which is in front that means the pipe which we can feel here in our neck region is the trachea commonly we call it wind pipe And the pipe which is behind it. You know you will have to imagine a little bit. The two pipes are like this. So if it is our neck, this is front pipe and this is the back pipe. So the pipe which is on the back side is our esophagus or which we call the food pipe. So this is esophagus. So next it is esophagus. Fagus. So, when we swallow our food, where does it go? We eat something, it comes into our buccal cavity and it goes here. And when we breathe in, where does the air go? So, air comes from here and it goes into this pipe. So, you can see that the passage of food and air, they cross. And that is why our elders tell us not to speak, talk or laugh while we are eating. Because there is a risk that while you are eating, along with the air, the food particles can go into our windpipe. And that causes choking. Sometimes it happens that we are laughing and we are eating. So some food particles, they enter into our windpipe also. So this esophagus... This is a tube, it goes through our neck, it goes through our chest area and then it crosses that diaphragm. There is a membrane which separates our chest cavity and our abdominal cavity. So say this is the diaphragm. So this esophagus enters into our abdominal cavity and now it opens into a bag-like structure. This bag is our stomach. So the next part is our stomach. Stomach is that area where again some digestive juices will be poured. And these digestive juices will also have enzymes and hydrochloric acid. So this is our stomach. I'm just going to make it a little smaller. So that we can draw all other parts. From the stomach, now the food is going to come into the small intestine. Small intestine is a narrow tube, but very long. So next part is small intestine. Our complete intestine, small intestine or large intestine together, they are approximately 20 feet approximately right so this is the major part so in intestine we will have three parts first part is known as duodenum then there is jejunum and ileum so we will draw the small intestine in a minute but let us come to the next part and that is our large intestine Large intestine is wider. It is not longer, but it is wider. Small intestine is longer, but is a narrow tube. And small intestine is highly folded. So, I am just going to leave a little part here. And this is the small intestine from here. But, in order to draw the small intestine, I will have to draw the large intestine first. So, I am going to make the large intestine. This is the large intestine. And here is the last part. And it is going to open out. Now I am going to make the connections. 
This is the first part of our small intestine that is duodenum. Now the duodenum comes here and now you can see that duodenum part coming here and it gets highly coiled. So what you see here is only the loops of the small intestines, highly, highely coiled tube-like structure, highly coiled tube. And then this tube, it opens into the large intestine. So this part is jejunum and ileum together. So this part is the duodenum and this part is jejunum and ileum, highly coiled. And now the small intestine opens into the large intestine. And this is the area where we find a tiny finger-like structure which is called the appendix. And in our case, this appendix is a vestigial structure. It is a vestigial structure and this is the large intestine. So here what is going to happen now? We eat something, it comes into buccal cavity, then it will be taken by the esophagus, it comes into the stomach. From stomach, duodenum, small intestine and then large intestine. From here the undigested material will be sent to the last part and it will get eliminated. So here the undigested food will move like this, then travel transversely, come down, bend and will be thrown out. So this part is known as the colon part. Here the material goes up, so we call it ascending colon. Here the material travels transversely, so we call transverse colon. Here it comes down, so we call descending colon. And this last part where the undigested material remains stored for some time is known as the rectum. And rectum opens out through anus. So large intestine also has parts like this is colon part and rectum part. This sac like structure which we see here is known as cecum. Again, in our case, it is vestigial. So, large intestine also has three parts. It has cecum, it has colon and it has rectum. So, last intestine opens out by anus. So, the tubular part, if you are talking about only the tubular part, that means from here till the end, only the tube tube part is known as elementary canal. So, we also use a term in our digestive system that is elementary canal. So, elementary canal includes the tubular part, all the tube part. Now, we will draw a gland, a largest gland of our body and that is the liver. So, liver is placed here in this part. So, this is the big liver. And attached to the liver, there is a tiny balloon-like structure and that tiny structure hangs from here and it is known as gall bladder. The functions of all these glands and all these structures we will talk about a little later, maybe in the next uh, video. But here let us understand one more uh, gland. There is one more gland which is placed in this area and this gland is known as the pancreas. So this is pancreas and pancreas is going to pour its secretion into the small intestine. There are salivary glands also, they are present in the buccal cavity. We will draw salivary glands later on. But when we talk about digestive system or how humans take the nutrition. So first the nourishment, the food enters through the mouth. It comes into the buccal cavity. We are going to chew it with the help of our teeth, mix it with the saliva, with the help of our tongue and then we swallow it. Once we swallow it, it goes into this pipe that is food pipe called esophagus. From here it enters into a bag like structure that is stomach. From stomach, 
there are intestines now. First part is the small intestine, then the large intestine. Liver also pours its secretion. Pancreas also pours its secretion. Stomach also produces enzymes and small intestine also produces enzymes. So, these enzymes will help in the digestion. See, we are also holozoic. So, our five steps are going to be common. Ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ingestion. So, ingestion is taking in, then digestion. So, there are main, many juices which are going to help in digestion. Then in small intestine, we will absorb, use it. And ingestion means the undigested material has to be thrown out of the body. So, this is our digestive system. These are the parts. And here, we also talk about glands. Like, we will add liver and pancreas. Because without their secretion, digestion of food will not be possible. So, when we say digestive system, we include mouth buccal cavity, the complete elementary canal that is the tubular part and the glands. This makes up our digestive system. Now, in the next part, we will take up all different parts and try to understand the detailed functions of those.